Okay guys, now we've got IELTS listening section 2. And uh, keep in mind, section by section, it becomes difficult. Because each section is a level. Section 1 is basic level of English. Section, section 2 is uh, intermediate. Section 3 is upper intermediate. Section 4 is advanced level of English. So, section by section, it's going to be more complicated. Section 2, questions 11 and 12, choose two letters A to E. Whenever they say choose two letters A to E, it means it's double multiple choice question. Choose two letters A to E. Two means double and A to E means multiple choice. Now, whenever there is multiple choice questions, first of all, you will read the question statement very carefully, underlining important words. For example, which two things does Alice say about Dolphin Conservation Trust? Underline two things Alice say and Dolphin Conservation Trust is something you need to keep in mind because all the conversation is about Dolphin Conservation Trust. Now look here. There are five options in total, right? Out of five options, three things she's going to discuss either negatively or oppositely or three statements are going to be false according to the audio. I tell you how, don't worry. When you match three statements with the audio, they will be false. They will be opposite. They will be negative. Only two options will match with the audio and those two options are the right answers. Now, what's the confusion? The confusion is they are going to discuss all the options but they're not going to discuss them in order. If they only discuss all five options like A, B, C, D, E, multiple choice questions will never be difficult. The difficulty is many students don't know which option is under discussion. Their pencil is on option A and in the audio they are discussing option E. Then they put their pencil on option D and in the audio they discuss option A and at the end they write two tukkas. And then they say, I Canada. Okay, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Okay, so that's the main problem. Now, the first thing is when audio is played, when they give you time to read the questions, in each option, underline one clue word. So that when in the audio they discuss that word, you know the first target is to catch the option which is being discussed. Once you catch that option, then you can decide whether this option is true or false. Now, I tell you how do they play. Option A. Children make up most of the membership. What does it mean? Most of the members are children. Now, if they have more adult members and few children, then this is not the right answer. Children make up most of the membership. If they say 70% of our members are children, then this is the right answer. If they say, well, most of our members are adults, there are only 10% who are children, then this is the wrong answer. Got it? Option B, it is the country's largest conservation organization. Underline country's largest. Now, largest means in comparison with other, it is the largest one. If they say we are the biggest or we are the largest, and if they say we are one of the large organizations, when they say we are one of the large, one of the large doesn't mean largest. Okay, or if they say we have large area for it and they don't compare it, if they compare it and they are the largest answer is right, that is the right answer. If they compare it and they are not largest, there are many other largest, there are, there are, there are larger conservation trusts there, so then it is going to be the wrong one. Okay, so just focus countries largest and I told you conservation organization is understood. Option C. It helps finance campaign for changes in fishing practices. Underline finance campaigns and changes in fishing. Now, finance campaign means they pay money. If they say we can guide you, although we will not be able to pay you any amount for that, then this is not the answer. If they say not only, with the, gui not only the guidance, we will also provide you financial aid, then this is the right answer okay it helps finance campaign finance campaign means to pay for, for for the campaign option d it employs several dolphin experts full time underline several dolphin experts full time and if they say we have only one part time dolphin expert 
then this is not the right answer. And if they say we have five to seven dolphin experts and they are our employees for part time. Answer is wrong. This is not the right answer. So several for several more than two is several. Okay. And full time. So you can underline several experts full time. Okay, just focus these words. These words are called nouns, verbs, adjectives. Mainly in multiple choice questions, you need to focus nouns. For example, dolphin experts. Expert is noun. Several is the number. And full time is full time, part time. It's an adjective, kind of adjective. Okay. Option E, volunteers help in various ways. Now, volunteers help various ways. And if they say volunteers can help you in one way only, then this is not the right answer. And if they say our volunteers can assist you in a number of different ways, then this is the right answer. So first, catch the option. How to catch the option? The words that you have underlined. After that, if it is the right answer, put a tick at the end. If it is the wrong answer, cross it. And sometimes this is what I call elimination. Crossing the wrong answer will help you find the right answer. Okay, so let's start. Section two. You will hear a woman called Alice Bussell talking on the radio about the Dolphin Conservation Trust, an organization which tries to protect dolphins. Today we're pleased to have on the show Alice Bussell from the Dolphin Conservation Trust. Tell us about the trust, Alice. Well, obviously its purpose is to protect dolphins in seas all around the world. It tries to raise people's awareness of the problems these marine creatures are suffering because of pollution and other threats. It started ten years ago and it's one of the fastest growing animal charities in the country, although it's still fairly small compared with the big players in animal protection. We're particularly proud of the work we do in education, Last year, we visited a huge number of schools in different parts of the country, going round to talk to children and young people aged from 5 to 18. In fact, about 35% of our members are children. Oh. The charity uses its money to support campaigns, for example, for changes in fishing policy and so forth. Mm. It hopes soon to be able to employ its first full-time biologist with dolphin expertise to monitor populations. Of course, many people give their services on a voluntary basis, and we now have volunteers working in observation, office work, and other things. C and E. No, not E. D. Not C. E. All right. Okay, now please write down one code. B A C, just write it there next to this. B A C D E. B for boy, A for apple, C for cat, D for doctor, E for elephant. Now, this is the order of the audio. The options were discussed in the audio as per this order. The correct answers are C for cat, E for elephant. Now, I just want to repeat this audio so that I could tell you why other three options are wrong. Section two. Tell us about the trust, Alice. Well, the first part is general. OK, she will come to this. Obviously, its <coughs> purpose is to protect dolphins in seas all around the world. It tries to raise people's awareness of the problems these marine creatures are suffering because of pollution and other threats. It started 10 years ago, and it's one of the fastest growing animal charities in the country. Okay, one of the fastest growing. Now, fastest is not largest. Yeah. Now, listen, now listen, 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 listen. Although it's still fairly small compared with the big players in animal... It's fairly small compared with the big players. So, option B is wrong. You need to cross it. And you, f you must cross it. Otherwise, with conf uh, due to some confusion, you'll, you'll just select it. Just a little cross. Now, please come to option A. Or protection. We're particularly proud of the work we do in education. Last year, we visited a huge number of schools in different parts of the country, going round to talk to children and young people aged from 5 to 18. In fact, about 35% of our members are children. 35% of our members are children. children. Now, 35%, is it most of the membership? No. 
it's not if it could be 85 75 95 so 35 is fairly small number that is why a is also wrong and you should cross it now please come to option c oh. the charity uses its money to support campaigns the charity uses its money to support campaigns option c it helps finance campaign listen on for example for changes in fishing policy and okay for changing in fishy policy and so on so this is the first right answer c okay after that please come to option d d for doctor okay. support campaigns for example for changes in fishing policy and so forth mm. It hopes soon to be able to employ its first full-time biologist. Soon to be able to employ a full-time biologist. Do they have several dolphin experts? They will. First, soon they will, they will just uh, employ that first uh, biologist. So that is expert. So D is not the right answer. Now come to option E. With dolphin expertise to monitor populations. Of course, many people give their services on a voluntary basis, and we now have volunteers working in observation, office work, and other things. Okay, observation, office work, and other things. That is various ways. So the right answer is option E. Got it now? Yeah, once you understand the wrong answers in multiple choice, you will be fine. What we do, we are always looking for right answers. And then we select the wrong answer. So if you separate wrong ones from the right ones, you'll be fine. Questions 13 to 15. Choose the correct letter A, B or C. Question number 13. Why is Alice so pleased the trust has won the charity commission award? Now, trust has won the charity commission award. What's the reason for her happiness? Why is she happy? Option A. Brought in extra money. With the award, if they say with the award they gave $10,000 or they gave 1 million pounds or anything like that, that is extra money. So why is she happy? Is the reason happy happiness or is, is she happy for the money? Option B, it made the work of the trust better known. Work of trust better known. Better known means now everyone knows <coughs> about the work of this trust. Option C, attracted more members. Okay, so, so because of this award, uh, now more people want to join. All right, award and all that. Now let's see. Again, the same formula. Wrong ones crossed and then you'll find the right one. I should also tell you about the award we won from the Charity Commission last year for our work in education. Although it's not meant an enormous amount of money for us, it has made our activities even more widely publicized and understood in the long term, it may not bring in extra members, but we're hoping it'll have this effect. B. And you know, the audio went like A, B, C. For A, it has brought extra money. She said no. For B, made the work well known, better known. And that is the right answer. Attracted more members in the future. Not now. All clear? Yeah. Good. Question number 14, Alice says oil exploration, underline oil exploration, causes problems to dolphins because. Now, why oil exploration causes problems to dolphins? Option A, noise. When they drill the earth or when they do drilling, there is a noise. Is this the problem with noise? Option B, oil leaks. When they drill for oil, there is the leakage of oil. Is that the problem? And C, movement of ships. There are so many ships coming and going and all that. So, uh, Alice says oil exploration causes problem to dolphins. Now, what is the reason? Is the reason noise? Is the reason oil leaks? Or is the reason movement of ships? Is it possible to see dolphins in UK waters? Yes, in several locations. And we have a big project in the east part of Scotland. This has long been a haven for dolphins because it has very little shipping. Oh. However, that may be about to change soon because oil companies want to increase exploration there. Mm. We're campaigning against this because although there'll be little pollution from oil, exploration creates a lot of underwater noise. It means the dolphins can't rest and socialise. A, noise. Yeah, dolphins can't rest and socialise. So, A is the right answer. Question number 15. Alice became interested in dolphins when? 
Now, what happened that Alice became interested in dolphins? Option A, she saw one swimming near her home. So, saw one means one dolphin. Saw one near her home. She saw a dolphin near her home. Now, most definitely her home is on the beach. Yeah, not otherwise. A dolphin was coming by taxi and say, hello, Alice. And she became interested. Option B, she helped a speaker at her school. There was a speaker who had to talk about dolphins and she helped a speaker. So underline, uh, sorry, she heard a speaker. So someone talked about dolphin and she said, wow, I will work on it and all that. Heard a speaker. Speaker means presenter. And option C, she read a book. So option A is dolphin swimming near her home. Option B is heard a speaker and option C is read a book. So the question is, Alice became interested. Now, when did she become interested or how? <laughs> this is how I became interested in dolphin conservation in the first place. I had never seen one and I hadn't been particularly interested in them at school. Then I came across this story about a family of dolphins who had to leave their home in the Moray Firth because of the oil companies and about a child who campaigned to save them. I couldn't put the book down. I was hooked. I couldn't put the book down. I was hooked. See that? Before that, she didn't say anything. We thought, and by the way, option A, she said, I had never seen any dolphin. Exactly. So B was confusing because what the story she was telling, uh, maybe at the end she could say the speaker told me about it, then it could be B. But when she talked about book, so option C was the right answer. And the audio went like A, B, C. They discussed all three options, A, B, C. All right, let's go on. Questions 16 to 20, and this is called matching. Right, you know matching? When you were small, you used to do matching of your cousins, elder cousins, and all that, yeah? When I was small, I used to do that matching, and most of my matchings were right. Now they are husband and wives, okay? So sometimes, you know, you do matching, is bhai ka us baji ke saath ho and all that. Anyways, so this matching is different. Yeah, this matching is you got to match the options with the questions. I tell you about it. The first thing is you read the question. Question is, which dolphin does Alice make each of the following comments about? So there are the names of dolphin and then there are the comments. So you got to match the comments with dolphins. Audio will go question by question and the comments are in the questions and dolphin names are in the options. So in this case, you will not read the options, you will read the questions. Because options like moon dancer. What is moon dancer? It's a dolphin. Echo, Kiwi, Samson. These are four names of dolphin. Like, you know, in the conservatory, they have four do uh, dolphins. Like in Lahore Zoo, we had an elephant. What was the name of that elephant? Susie. It died many years ago. So Susie was the name. In the same way, they have dolphins there. And these are the names of the dolphins. Okay. <coughs> now, comments. Question number 16. It has not been seen this year. One of these dolphins did not appear this year. Or it did not come. Or no one has seen that. Now, which dolphin is it? Moon Dancer, Echo, Kiwi, Samson. And answer is not going to be Moon Dancer. Answer will be A, B, C or D. I'm sure our listeners will want to find out what they can do to help. You mentioned the adopt a dolphin scheme. Can you tell us about that? Of course. People can choose one of our dolphins to sponsor. They receive a picture of it and news updates. I'd like to tell you about four which are currently being adopted by our members. Moon Dancer, Echo, Kiwi and Samson. <laughs> Unfortunately, Echo is being rather elusive this year and hasn't yet been sighted by our observers. But we remain optimistic that he'll be out there soon. Echo has been elusive and has not been sighted. So answer is B. B. Well done. And never write echo. Never write that word. Only write A, B, C. Whenever the label, label means A, B, C, D. Then you will just write the label. You will not write the word. So 16 answer is B. 17. It is photographed more than the others. Like they have taken a lot of photos of this uh, dolphin. All the others have been out in force. 
Samson and Moondancer are often photographed together, but it's Kiwi who's our real character, as she seems to love coming up close for the cameras, and we've captured、okay. her on film hundreds of times. See, exactly, it's Kiwi. She talked about two, but then she said it's Kiwi who is photogenic. All right. So answer is C, not Kiwi. Okay. Question number eighteen. It is always very energetic. For energetic, they will use the word very active, moving around here and there, dancing and all that. They all have their own personalities. Moon dancer is very elegant and curves out and into the water very smoothly, whereas Samson has a lot of energy. He's always leaping out of the water with great vigor. Samson has a lot of energy. So, lot of energy means it is always very energetic. Answer is D is Samson. Well done. Question number nineteen. It is the newest one in the scheme. Now they have adopted another dolphin. Let's see newest one. You'd probably expect him to be the youngest. He's not quite. That's Kiwi, but Samson's the latest of our dolphins to be chosen for the scheme. Samson is the latest one. So latest and newest, they are synonyms. So answer is D. <coughs> Question number twenty. It is an unusual shape. One dolphin has unusual shape. Which is left? Moon dancer. Let's see. Kiwi makes a lot of noise, so we can often pick her out straight away. <laughs> Echo and Moon Dancer are noisy too, but Moon Dancer is easy to find because she has a particularly large fin on her back, which makes her easy to identify.、She、so has, yes, they're all very different. Yeah, she has a particularly large fin on her back. Unusual shape. Now the word unusual shape and large fin on her back. That's the thing. Answer is A. All right. Okay, guys. <clears throat> Now is your time to learn and understand multiple choice questions. Just remember, as we did IELTS listening part one, there they tested your ability to identify right information from wrong information. For example, in one question, they said Friday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever. But out of three days, one answer was right. In the same way, when it was two thirty p.m., they said five p.m., four p.m., but one answer was right. In the same way, in multiple choice questions, they give you three options, and out of three options, one option is the right one, and you need to identify that. Now, how to identify the right option? In order to identify the right option, you have to eliminate the wrong option, or you have to be aware of wrong option that A is wrong, B is wrong. When you identify the wrong option in multiple choice questions, you will never have any problem. How to do it? I tell you now. Visiting the sheep market area, sheep market, like you know, market. We've got we what would we call sheep market here? Bakra Mandi, sheep market. So visiting the sheep market area, they the area they have a Bakra Mandi as well. Question number eleven. Now, in multiple choice questions, mainly the question and then the option. So, question is which is most rapidly growing group? Underline most rapidly growing group of residents. So, now your answer is most rapidly growing group of residents in the sheep market area. Okay, they will talk about three groups, but one of them is mostly. Uh, most rapidly growing group. <coughs> Option A: Young professional people, young professionals like who just completed their education and they have started their professional life. Option B: Students from university. Now see that they have written four words: students from the university. Actually, it is university students. Simple. University students and option C employees in local market. So you can even make it short: local market employees. Now question is most rapidly growing group of residents. And remember, residents are the people who live there, the people who visit, the people who come and go. They are not the residents. Residents are those who live at a certain place. So out of three, one is going to be the right answer. 
they will discuss all three options sometimes they leave out one option but otherwise they discuss all three options another point they will not discuss them in order it's not that first they will discuss a b c no they can start from c then they can go to b then they can come to a so now please listen and answer welcome to this podcast about the sheep market which is one of the oldest parts of the city as its name suggests there was originally a market here where farmers brought their sheep but now it's been redeveloped into a buzzing, vibrant area of the city, which is also home to one of the city's fastest growing communities. The nearby university has always meant the area is popular with students who come in to enjoy the lively nightlife, but now graduates embarking on careers in the worlds of fashion and design are buying up the new apartments recently built here to replace the small houses where the market workers used to live. A, no. C. Well done. Excellent. Anyone with B? No. Okay, the right answer is A. Now please write down a code. B. A. C. Capital B, capital A, capital C. <coughs> so B. A. C. is the order in which they discussed these options. I'm playing it again. Welcome to this podcast about the sheep market, which is one of the oldest parts of the city. As its name suggests, there was originally a market here where farmers brought their sheep, but now it's been redeveloped into a buzzing, vibrant area of the city, which is also home to one of the city's fastest growing communities. The nearby university has always meant the area is popular with students who come in to enjoy the lively nightlife. Okay, students who come and enjoy the lively nightlife. It means students are not the residents. So, B is not the right answer, okay? Let's go on. Now please come to option A. But now graduates embarking on careers in the worlds of fashion. Okay, now graduates embarking on their career about fashion. That means young professional people. For young professional people, they use the word graduates who are embarking on their career. The nearby university has always meant the area is popular with students who come in to enjoy the lively nightlife. But now graduates embarking on careers in the worlds of fashion and design are buying up the new apartments recently. Are buying up the new apartments recently. So young professional people, they are most rapidly growing group of residents. They are buying apartments. So when they are buying apartments, so they are going to be that. Recently built here to replace the small houses where the market workers used to live. To replace the small houses where market workers used to live. Option C, employees in the local market? No. Got it? So, the correct answer is A. Let's go on. <clears throat> Question number 12. Speaker recommends side streets. Underline speaker recommends. Underline side streets in the sheep market for there. Now, side street. And speaker says you must go to side street. For there means what is special about side streets. Option A, international restaurants. Now in the audio, if he says there are many restaurants in the side street. So will that be the answer? Unless he uses the word international chain of restaurants or international restaurants. Okay. Option B, historical buildings. If he says, well, uh, all the historical buildings are in the main street. They are not in the side street. Will that be the answer? No. Yeah. So, you know, your understanding of English. Now, some of you who are having wrong answers, what, what are they doing? They are doing in the audio, they will say, well, the historical buildings are on the main street. Historical building? B? Okay. That's the right answer. They only pick up the words. So, it depends on your English. It depends on your understanding of the language. This is what they check. That is why they've got multiple choice questions. Option C, arts and crafts. For arts and crafts, they can use the word uh, like uh, pottery, rugs, painting, sculpture, anything like that. Now, remember, side street is recommended by the speaker. What is the purpose? Was Is it because of international restaurants? Is it because of? Historical buildings or is it because of arts and crafts? Let's see. The sheep market is a center for fashion. The narrow old side streets are great places for finding original pictures, jewelry and ceramics which won't break the bank. As well as local produce like fruit and vegetables. 
There's also lots of pavement cafes where you can have a coffee and watch tourists from all over the world go by. The oldest buildings in the area are on the main streets, including the city's first department store, built in the 1880s, which is still open today. C no. Come on. Come on. Well done. Excellent. Write down the code. C A B. C A B. Now those who have written the wrong answers, they are alert. When I say C is not right, I know. That's the right answer. Okay. So C A B. Now I'll play it again. Please listen and you'll be clear. The narrow old side streets are great places for finding original pictures, jewelry, and ceramics which won't break. Pictures, jewelry, ceramics, what is that? Arts and crafts. Good place to find. What does he say? It is for finding original pictures. Side streets are great places for finding. A great place to find. Great place to find means that is why he's recommending that. Original pictures, jewelry, and ceramics which won't break the bank. As well as local produce like fruit and vegetables. There's also lots of pavement cafes where you can have a coffee and watch tourists from all over the world go. Tourists all over the world. Cafes, he didn't mention local or international. So that is why A is the wrong answer. Got it? Got the point? Cafes are there, but tourists are international tourists. And then B is historical building. Bye. The oldest buildings in the area are on the main streets. Main street. Okay, so historical buildings are there. That is why it's a wrong answer. So whenever you are preparing, you are doing practice, you must understand why other two options are wrong. When you understand why other two options are wrong, you will never have any mistake, right? Question number 13. Clothes designed by entrants. Entrants means participants. For the young fashion competition must. Now, what's the subject? Clothes. Clothes. Subject is? So clothes must what? De designed by entrants. A. Modeled by the designers themselves. For example, if I design a coat, I'm going to model it as well. Right? I design it and I'm going to model it. Inspired by aspects of contemporary culture. Contemporary culture means art of the same time. Contemporary art means art of the same time. If we are in 2023, the art of 2023 is contemporary art. Means of the same time. Right? So inspired by aspects of contemporary culture. And option C, made from locally produced materials. Made from local material. Okay, now clothes. Imagine clothes. Option A, modeled by the designers. Option B, inspired by contemporary culture. Culture of present. Contemporary culture. And option C, made from local materials. The sheep market is a centre for fashion, and there's a policy of encouraging new young designers. The young fashion competition is open to local young people who are passionate about fashion. This year, they've been asked to design an outfit based on ideas from the music and technology that's part of their everyday life, using both natural and man-made fibres. The garments will be judged by a panel of experts and fashion designers, and the winning entries will be modelled at a special gala evening. All right, write down the code B, C, A. And you know, in IELTS, sometimes some speakers are very clear. Some speakers are not clear. This speaker is not very clear. The way he is talking, if you compare this one with this. It sounds really interesting. This is very clear. And ladies are clearer than the men, actually. But this gentleman. The sheep market is a... Bonga. Yeah, anyways, so he's talking like this, okay? So some speakers are like this. You should understand them. Anyways, now, have you written down the code BCA? Yes. Now, I play the audio and we start again. The sheep market is a centre for fashion and there's a policy of encouraging new young designers. The young fashion competition is open to local young people who are passionate about fashion. This year, they've been asked to design an outfit based on ideas from the music and technology that's part of their everyday life. Okay, music and technology and part of their everyday life. Inspired by aspects of contemporary culture. Contemporary culture, music and technology and the part of their everyday life. Now, please come to option B. 
using both natural and man-made fibers. Using both natural and man-made fibers. Now, have they mentioned anything about local fiber? Fiber produced in the area? No, C is the wrong answer. Now, please come to option A. The garments will be judged by a panel of experts and fashion designers and the winning entries will be modelled at a special gala evening. Okay, winning entries will be modelled. Now, have they mentioned who is going to model? I mean, is it going to be the designers who will model? No mention of that. Got it? So, this is the whole thing about multiple choice. We have one more question. Question number 14. Car parking is free in some car parks if you... Now, listen. Whenever they use if, if means condition. Right? If you do something, then car parking is free. And what is that? You know, if you go to a big store and they say if you buy anything, then car parking is free. Otherwise, yeah, you got to pay. All right. A. Stay for less than an hour. Less than an hour. Usually this happens. If you're going to a mall or anywhere, less than an hour, parking is free. And after that, you got to pay. Option B, buy something in the shops. So if less than an hour parking is free, A is the right answer. If you buy something from the shop, then parking is free, then B is the right answer. And if you park in the evenings or weekend, if they say in the evening or weekend parking is free, then C is the right answer. So whenever parking is free, that will be the right answer. Parking at the sheep market is easy. There are plenty of pay and display car parking spaces on the roadsides, which are fine if you just want to stay for an hour or two. But if you want to spend the day there, it's better to park in one of the four underground car parks. It's not expensive, and if you can present a receipt from one of the local stores, you'll not be charged at all. After 6pm, many of the car parks have a flat rate which varies, but it is usually very reasonable. Okay, think again. B, no. Sure? Good job. Now please write down the code A, B, C. And this code is just for your understanding for now. This code will not apply on every multiple choice question. Okay? So first they discuss option A, then B, then C. Please listen. Parking at the sheep market is easy. There are plenty of pay and display car parking spaces on the roadsides, which are fine if you just want to stay for an hour or two. If you want to stay for an hour or two, but they did not mention price, stay for less than an hour. But he said an hour or two, and even he did not mention price. So A is not the right answer. Now come to option B. But if you want to spend the day there, it's better to park in one of the four underground car parks. It's not expensive, and if you can present a receipt from one of the local stores, you'll not be charged at all. Okay, if you present the receipt from one of the local stores, you will not be... So you will not be charged means free, right? So when you find the right answer and then C. Now, what do they say about C? Oh. After 6 p.m., many of the car parks have a flat rate which varies. But okay. it is usually After very 6 reasonable. p.m., many of the car parks have flat rate. So evening, are they free on evening? No, flat rate. Flat rate means like five pounds or one pound and all that. Is this clear? So in multiple choice questions, instead of looking for the right answer, eliminate the wrong options and you will find the right one okay thank you okay guys in IELTS listening part two sometimes we have map right and many students get confused and why do we have map in IELTS listening because when you're going to go to a foreign country especially English speaking country you should be able to find your way no doubt we have Google Maps now that is why the frequency of this map is quite less than before. In the past, almost in every other test, they had maps. But now in part two, mainly they have multiple choice and matching type of questions. But still, maps are on their menu. They can give you a map. Okay, now, label the map below. Questions 15 to 20. Write the correct letter A to I next to questions 15 to 20. And they have given us directions as well. West east north and south so on the left side of the map please write w w for west on the right side of the map write e capital e e for on top of the map below art and history in the sheep market write n n for north at the bottom of the map write s s for 
south now if they say west go to left side and if they don't give these uh, directions then they use the word on the left side of the map and the left side is exactly in front of you whatever the left is this is left side this is right left is west right is east top is north and bottom is south so they use the word top of the map bottom of the map left side right side and all that okay now whenever they give you maps you don't need to read the questions because questions are places and there is no information in questions instead of questions you're going to read the map on the map first of all you need to see what are the main streets main roads or main places on the map can you see crawley road yes, can you see city road yes. can you see hill road so first you need to see the roads, Crawley Road, City Road, Hill Road, and all that. Now, can you see the bank, yes. Station Square, yes. Public Gardens, yes. that's it. So whenever they use these names, for example, if they say it's the other side of the bank or it's on the opposite side of the bank, answer is C. If they say, uh, for example, if they say... Uh, all right, if they say from Hill Road, there is a zigzag road and on the right you will find it. B. Option B, exactly. If they say, well, from Crawley Road, if you come to City Road, it's the only building on the right hand side. F. F. Right? So what happens? Your hand or your pencil will move with the audio. If they say on City Road, immediately come to City Road. If they say on Hill Road, immediately come to Hill Road and you'll find the answers. Uh, well, they use prepositions, prepositions of location and prepositions of place. For example, in front of, behind, next to. Okay, so these type of prepositions will actually help you. Now, question number 15, Reynolds House. Let's see where this Reynolds House is. The sheep market is one of the main centres for art and history in the whole of the country. If you look at our map, you'll see some of the main attractions there. Most visitors start from Crawley Road at the bottom of the map. The Reynolds House is one of the oldest houses in the city and is open to the public. It's on the north side of Crawley Road, next to the footpath that leads to the public gardens. North side of Crawley Road next to the footpath that leads to public garden try again no tukka nahi lagana north side of crawley road mil gaya acha ji ye g bhi ho sakta hai h bhi ho sakta hai then he said next to the footpath that leads to public garden ab dekhe public garden mein ek chhota sa rasta ja raha hai to uske sath kaun sa option hai h okay i play this one again the sheep market is one of the main centers for art and history in the whole of the country if you look at our map, you'll see some of the main attractions there. Most visitors start from Crawley Road at the bottom of the map. The Reynolds House is one of the oldest houses in the city and is open to the public. It's on the north side of Crawley Road, next to the footpath that leads to the public gardens. Okay, north side of Crawley Road, next to the footpath that leads to public garden. Public garden me ki rasta ja rahe. So H is the right answer. Next is thumb. Now thumb is a place. Otherwise this is what we call thumb. But they have got a place thumb. The area is particularly interesting for its unusual sculptures. The thumb is just what its name suggests. But it's about 10 meters high. You'll see it on Hill Road. Across the road from the bank. You will see it on Hill Road. Across the road from the bank. Across the road from the bank. Come on. A is on the same side. A is along the road. Across the road from the bank means opposite side of the bank. Across the road from the bank means on the other side of the bank. So that is option C. Now these are prepositions. Across the other road from the bank. Okay. Correct answer is C. Question number 17. Museum. Let's see where that is. The museum's got a particularly fine collection of New Zealand landscapes. It's on the east side of the sheep market on City Road. It's on the other side of the road from the public gardens, immediately facing the junction with Hill Road. Immediately facing the junction from Hill Road, 
and it is on east side of city road junction means where two roads join राइट तो कैसे आंसर कभी सही नहीं होगा ये याद रखिएगा आई एल प्ले इट अगेन द म्यूजियम्स गॉट अ पर्टिकुलरली फाइन कलेक्शन ऑफ न्यूजीलैंड लैंडस्केप्स इट्स ऑन द ईस्ट साइड ऑफ द शीप मार्केट ऑन सिटी रोड ओके ईस्ट साइड ऑफ शीप मार्केट ऑन सिटी रोड ईस्ट साइड पे एक ही ऑप्शन है एंड दैट इज एफ अब आगे उसको दोबारा आपको हेल्प कर रहे हैं आपको वो भी समझे इट्स ऑन द अदर साइड ऑफ द रोड फ्रॉम द पब्लिक गार्डन्स immediately facing the junction with hill road immediately facing the junction from hill road hill junction means when two roads join so there is option f why e he said others ha mujhe bhi yahi lag raha hai na ye thoda sa na isko samjhana nahi aa raha hame all right let's try again bada clearly bata usne do hints di hain aapko dobara sunen the museum's got a pit- collection of new zealand landscapes it's on the east side of the sheep market on city road east side of sheep market on city road ab city road ke east pe kya hai there is only one option just one option yahan pe clear ho gaya now let's go on it's on the other side of the road from the public gardens it's on the other side of the road from public gardens public gardens are on the left it's on the right other side of the road and there is only one option and then public gardens immediately facing the junction with hill road immediately facing the junction from hill road hill road junction and immediately facing it's that so you need to learn this vocabulary these words immediately facing across the road and all that okay let's go on question number 18 contemporary art gallery let's see where this gallery is The contemporary art gallery is on a little road that leads off Station Square, not far from the public gardens. The road ends at the gallery. It doesn't go anywhere else. That's the, open every day except Mondays. The road ends in gallery. It doesn't go anywhere. That is option G. There is only that G. It ends there. Please listen to it again. The contemporary art gallery is on a little road that leads off Station Square. Okay, little road that leads off O W F off. that leads off station square now you see station square other roads are big but only this small road that leads to g not far from the public gardens the road ends at the gallery it doesn't go anywhere the road ends at gallery it doesn't go anywhere so that is only option g now warner gallery let's see where that is the warner gallery specializes in 19th century art It's on City Road near the junction with Crawley Road on the same side of the road as the public gardens. It's open on weekdays from 9 to 5 and entry is free. Well listen first thing is you need to wait for the audio to stop right and second thing is with very got with with great confidence you are uttering the wrong answers. <laughs> Check yourselves huh it's not e e e is the right answer wrong answer. focus and, and what happens when you are developing this habit then your first task is to utter the answer i want to be the first one and then you have the wrong answer so please listen to the audio quietly when the audio finishes then you tell me the answer otherwise when you say e everyone say e kithe e kithe like that and then they lose their own answer okay so don't do that right okay i'll play this one again e is not the right answer your answer is wrong Was it question number nineteen? Yeah. The Warner Gallery specializes in nineteenth century art. It's on City Road near the junction with Crawley Road. Okay, it's on City Road near the junction of Crawley Road. Now, City Road and Crawley Road, there is only one option. That is I. It is not H. Why not H? Number one, we have used H already. Number two, H is not on City Road. Got it? Now, those who reached E, they missed the word junction. Junction means where two roads join, like you call it chalk, churaha chalk, and all that. Okay, so the right answer is I. Let's go on. Question number twenty. Finally, if you're interested in purchasing high quality artwork, the place to go is Nucleus. You need to go from Crawley Road up through Station Square and east along Hill Road until you get to a small winding road turning off. Go up there, and it's on your right. If you get to City Road, 
You've gone too far. Okay, go up there and it is on your right. Which option? B is the right answer. He took you from Station Square, Hill Road, and then he said Zigzag Road. So that leads there. Question number 20, I play again. Finally, if you're interested in purchasing high quality artwork, the place to go is Nucleus. You need to go from Crawley Road up through Station Square. Okay, Crawley Road up through Station Square. Now, can you see there is one road going up through Station Square towards Hill Road? And east along Hill Road until you get to a small winding road to... Until you get to a small winding road. Winding road. Winding off. Go up there and it's on your right. Go up there and it is on your right. So that is option B. Okay, thank you. Okay, now let's go on. We have listening part two. Uh, the only change that took place in IELTS is that this part two. In the past, they used to call it section and now they call it part, right? This is the change here. Uh, so questions 11 to 16, complete the notes below. This sentence will always tell you about the type of questions you are doing and the type of questions is notes completion. Complete the notes below. Write no more than two words and you should encircle two so that it reminds you. And by the way, when you are filling your answer sheet in the last 10 minutes, then you have to recheck this again that this question type is no more than two words. This is one word only so that you don't write a wrong answer. Okay. No more than two words means maximum two words, minimum one word and or a number for each answer. National Arts Center, like we have National Arts College here in Lahore, NCA, they have National Arts Center. Well known for, underline well known. So they usually use the word popular, they use the word famous. Well known for means purpose. Why is it popular? Why is it famous? Well known for or popular for. So question number 11 is why is this art center famous? Or why is this art center, or what is it that the art center is famous about? Just listen and answer. Section 2. You will hear a man talking on the radio about a national arts center. Hello, and welcome to Focus on the Arts. I'm your host, Dave Green, and this is your very own local radio program. Every Friday evening, we put the spotlight on different arts and culture facilities and look at the shows and events that are on offer in the coming week. And today, the focus is on the National Arts Centre. Now, if you don't already know it yourself, I'm sure you've all heard of it. It's famous throughout the world as one of the major venues for classical music. It is famous throughout the world as a major venue for classical music. Now, if you write only classical, it should be wrong. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because, no, it's not just two words. Sometimes one word can be, un uh, can be the answer as well. But only classical does not describe music. So the correct answer is classical music. Clear? Good. Let's go on. Then they will talk about concert rooms, theaters, cinemas. Means audio will continue then. It will go on and on. And you can, this hand will come over here. And this hand will follow when they talk about theaters, cinemas, art galleries, public library, restaurant. And at last they will talk about one thing. After restaurant. So whatever they say after restaurant and we also have and there is also that will be your answer. And it's going to be the type of things like theater, cinema, art gallery and all that. Please listen and answer. But did you know that it's actually much more than just a place to hear concerts? The centre itself is a huge complex that caters for a great range of arts. Under a single roof it houses concert rooms, theatres, cinemas, art galleries and a wonderful public library. As well as service facilities including three restaurants and a bookshop. Three restaurants and a bookshop now see tracking the audio is very important if you don't track the audio it's be, it becomes difficult for you but once you go on theater cinema this 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 you can easily find the answer so make it a habit whenever you practice do ielts listening with both hands one hand to track the audio one hand to write the answer so answer is bookshop and uh, you can write bookshop as one word or you can write it as two words or you can write it with the uh, hyphen that is that is going to be fine bookshop bookshop 
if it is one word only then you will write bookshop together actually usually bookshop is written as one word but if you write it separately they will accept it if you write hyphen they will accept it okay let's go on historical background 1940 is mentioned destroyed now you are concerned about 1960s to 17th center was dash and built now please focus the word built which form is it third form which tense is it past tense which voice is it active or passive passive voice so answer is going to be another verb center was designed and built designed so like this they check your ability whether you understand tenses or not if you write your answer in first form of the verb your answer will be wrong because they've already used built built is third form so center was maybe center was designed and built center was prepared and built center was something like that now please listen and answer question number 13 uh one thing we'll go on with 14 also because i've got the audios for both so question number 14 in dash now can you see uh, again yes it's a date and how do you understand because above that they have given the dates and then there is a hyphen so answer is going to be dash uh, it's a date open to public so when this national art center open to public for example in 1985 in 1990 in 2000 and then opened to public so let's see so at any one time the choice of entertainment there is simply enormous so how did they manage to build such a big arts complex right in the heart of the city well the area was completely destroyed by bombs during the war in 1940 so the opportunity was taken to create a cultural center that would be what they called the city's gift to the nation of course it took a while for such a big project to get started but it was planned in the 60s built in the 70s and eventually opened to the public in 1983 ever since then yeah. it has proved to be a great success so plan planned in 60s built in 70s and opened to public in 1983 so answer is going to be 1983 or even you can write 80s 1980s right i'm playing this one again so at any one time the choice of entertainment there is simply enormous so how did they manage to build such a big arts complex right in the heart of the city well the area was completely destroyed by bombs during the war in 1940 so the opportunity was taken to create a cultural center that would be what they called the city's gift to the nation of course it took a while for such a big project to get started but it was planned in the 60s it was planned in the 60s built in the 70s built in the 70s so planned spelling p l a l n yeah that's right e d and now they talk about 83 and eventually opened to the public in 1983 and eventually opened to public in 1983 and have you noticed audio is fast right so sometimes this happens you need to go on quickly let's go on question number 15 can you see they've written managed by you see ye toot ke iska sikka managed by for managed by they might use the word run by run by so whatever they say after run by that will be your answer please now listen and answer question number 15 it's not privately owned like many art centers but is still in public hands it's run by the city council it's run by the city council so do you guys understand the language which is going on in the audio and the language which is written on the question booklet these two quest languages are different uh, but same in meaning last open dash days per year like they say open 365 days per year right so it's going to be number of days that it is open let's see Both our National Symphony Orchestra and National Theatre Company were involved in the planning of the project and they're now based there giving regular performances every week. And as the center is open 363 days of the year there are plenty of performances to choose from. Okay as the center is open 300 and 63. So how will you write 363? 3 6 that's it. All clear? Good. Okay guys now we have questions 17 to 20 complete the table below if you are lucky 
then you will get completion type of questions more and more and they have a huge variety of tests if you are unlucky part one multiple choice part one again multiple choice one of my students he got around 30 multiple choice questions in one test he said sir everywhere multiple choice single multiple choice double multiple choice even triple multiple choice where out of seven options you select three options so if you are unlucky then there are more multi so that is why ielts depends on your luck as well not this luck the other luck l u c k luck okay yeah anyways let's go on complete the table below write no more than three words and or a number now by the way this no more than three words is older pattern but this is very common presently as well in the test they're giving no more than three words maximum word limit is three minimum is one okay no more than three words and or a number for each answer day time is there any question in day no time event yes two questions about event venue one question and ticket price now ticket price is going to be a number venue is going to be the name of a place and event is going to be the name of the event now can you guys see question number 17 is venue venue for what magic flute now in the audio when they say the word magic flute and after that they will say anything it will be held at or it has been arranged at the dash or it will be conducted in the whatever they say after that answer is going to be a location place right so to give you some idea of what's on and to help you choose from the many possibilities we've made a selection of the star attractions if you're interested in classical music then we recommend you go along to the national on either monday or tuesday evening at 7 30 for a spectacular production of the magic flute probably the most popular of all mozart's operas it's in the garden hall and tickets start at only eight pounds but you'll have to be early if you want to get them that cheap yeah. and remember it's only on for he those two evenings very very clearly very very cleverly about it i mean he just chewed the word sometimes they chew the words as well he chewed the word very very clearly and when i tell you the answer you'll say eh? garden hall but the way he spoke garden just listen to him again right yeah so sometimes if you fail to understand the word just focus the sound and write that word okay let's see so to give you some idea of what's on and to help you choose from the many possibilities we've made a selection of the star attractions if you're interested in classical music then we recommend you go along to the national on either monday or tuesday evening at 7 30 for a spectacular production of the magic flute probably the most popular of all mozart's operas it's in the garden hall and yeah exactly it's in the garden hall it's in the garden hall exactly so as you listen to it as garden garden hall speak garden as well not garden yeah let's go on wednesday 8 p.m dash canadian film so answer is going to be the name of the movie and can you see inverted commas yeah so it means answer is going to be the name of a movie one serious note for you all on ielts listening and ielts reading answer sheet never use punctuation marks you don't need to by the way right yes you if there are two words that make the answer write both words together but never use punctuation marks like comma full stop inverted commas and all that so the answer is going to be the name of that canadian film and by the way whenever they write anything canadian film for that they will say that is called right there's a movie which was made in canada that is called that is called it is known as that is called it is known as after that they will tell you the name of the movie for those more interested in the cinema you might like to see the new canadian film which is showing on wednesday evening at 8 p.m in cinema 2 and that's called three lives <laughs> that's called three l-i-f-e-s l-i V E S three lives and you can write three as a word or as a number no problem okay three live but when there is the name of a movie then you can write t-h-r-double-e but it's fine three as a digit or as a word because they've written no more than three words and or a number so three is going to be the answer three lives okay cinema two and the price of the ticket that's it question number 19 
It's had fantastic reviews, and tickets cost just £4.50, which is a reduction on the usual price of £5.50. So, it's really good. Yeah, £5? £4.50. Reduction of the usual price, £5.50. Now, keep in mind, whenever they use currency sign in the middle, and there is one amount in the beginning and one amount at the end, currency sign will be replaced by a point, a dot. For example, £4.50. You, how will you write it? 4.50. If they say it'll cost you $10.80. $10.80. 10 if they say it'll cost you 6 euros 85. 6.85. Is it clear? Right? And if they say it'll cost you $350. $350 means 350. No, not point. $350. Yeah, 350, 350, $3.50, $3.50, 3.50, so please don't forget that. Sometimes your right answer, I mean, I think there are 30% careless mistakes in IELTS listening. And because of those careless mistakes, your band score decreases tremendously. One wrong answer is enough to degrade you from 8 to 7.5 if you need 8777. From 7 to 6.5 and from 6 each to 5.5 okay so be careful let's go on question number 20 it's saturday and sunday 11 a.m to 10 p.m dash art exhibition answer is going to be the name of art exhibition let's see what is the name but you can see the center's main attraction at the weekend because on saturday and sunday 11 a.m to 10 p.m they're showing a wonderful new exhibition that hasn't been seen anywhere else in Europe yet. It's a collection of Chinese art called Faces of China. That's in Gallery it's 1. It's a collection of Chinese or art called Faces of China. Now, they don't mind singular plural, but over here, because it's the name of the art exhibition, if you write Face of China, your answer will be wrong. The correct answer is Faces of China. That's right.